In the previous video in this series, we covered some of the basic editing tools, and in this video, we are going to continue that look. We will start with the options in the Tools menu. The first section in this menu we will look at is the AMP section. The AMP tool is used to edit the volume and panning of your impulse response file. Clicking on this option from the menu will bring up the AMP dialog window. Use the controls found in this window to make changes while using the preview button to audition your changes. Use the pan parameter if you wish to alter the stereo panning. The LR parameter is the volume control. Use this to alter the volume of your impulse response. There is also the individual controls for the volume of the left and right channels. Once you have the changes you like, click the Accept button to apply them to the impulse response file. If you wish to exit without applying any changes, simply close the AMP window. You can apply normalization to the entire file or just the currently selected portion with the Normalize tool. The Fade In and Fade Out tools allow you to apply fades to the selection portion of the audio. Let's move on to the Time section. And the first tool here is the Reverse tool, which, as the name implies, allows you to reverse the entire audio file or just a selection of it. The Time Stretcher tool is used to change either the pitch of the impulse response file or its length. Selecting this tool from the menu will open the Time Stretcher Pitch Shifter dialog window. From this dialog, we can make adjustments to the pitch of the impulse response file. We can also adjust the length of the file. Use the Time Multiply parameter to adjust the length as a multiple of the original length. or you can enter the exact length desired in milliseconds. You can also determine the quality of the time and pitch shifting by selecting from the various methods. In most cases, the Pro default will be a good choice, but feel free to experiment. You may also want to adjust some of the format controls if you wish to preserve the original format character. Again, click Accept if you wish to apply the changes. If not, then simply close the window. The Channels section of the menu is where you can perform some basic editing to the number of channels. The first option will swap the channels when a stereo file is used. The Convert Left Channel to Mono will convert the impulse response file to a mono file using only the left channel, while Convert Right Channel to Mono does the same except using the right channel. Moving on to some of the other menus in Convolver, let's have a look at the View menu. The Spectrum option will allow you to alter the view to show the frequency spectrum for the impulse response file. Disabling the Spectrum option will return it back to the waveform view. Use the Dual View option if you wish to view both waveform and spectrum views at the same time. Use some of the display settings options to further customize the look of the editor. You can also select the time format that is shown in the editor window. Use the scroller above option to place the waveform overview above the main editing window. The Background Gradient option determines the look of the editing window's background. Use the Snap menu to determine the snapping that is used when selecting within the editor. You can snap to grid, or even snap to samples. 
Use the snap to zero crossing to ensure the selection starts and ends where the waveform hits the zero crossing point to ensure no clicks or pops appear in your edits. From the select menu, use the deselect option to clear any current selections. Use the select before current selection to select all the audio in front of the current selection. Use the select after current selection to select all the audio behind the current selection. Use the select zoom part to select all the audio that is currently zoomed in on. Use the various options from the zoom menu to control the zooming of the contents in the editing window. So, in this video we took a look at some of the more impulse response editing features. In fact, we only touched upon a few of the editing tools. I encourage you to explore and experiment with some of the more advanced editing features. We also looked at some of the other basic menu options such as the view, snap, and zoom menus. In the next video, we are going to take a look at editing envelopes with the Curve Editor.